All right, everybody get your psalm books and turn to page number 53. 53. Brother Lee Russell will be leading our singing in just a moment. So good to see everybody here today. A lot of people that hasn't been here in a long, long time are able to be here because the vaccination is out there and they've gotten that and feel a little bit more safe. Their surgery, they feel better because their surgery is a little better, so they're here. And it's just great to see people uh, coming back and, and being part of the worship service. Good to see everybody in the auditorium and other two venues. Good to see you too. So turn to page 53. We're going to begin our worship in just a moment. But we'll go ahead and use these first few minutes before the worship begins to make some announcements. The order of the worship is going to be uh, right after the announcements. We'll have our opening prayer. Brother Van Roberts will direct our minds in that. And following the opening prayer, we'll have our first song, number 53. Right after that first song, we'll have our message. Following the message, we'll have the invitation song, which Brother Lee will announce. And then following the invitation song and any responses that we have, we'll take... Take those, uh, then we'll have our third song, which will be the song, Preparing Our Minds for the Lord's Supper, which Brother Russell will lead. And then the Lord's Supper and the giving prayers will be led by Brother Alex Kirkendall. We'll have a closing song, our fourth song, and then we will uh, dismiss in our closing prayer, Michael Barron will lead that prayer. We do have a few announcements to pass along. First of all, I'd like to read this card. It was sent by uh, Sister Kay Bryant. Remember, she lost her husband, Paul, recently. And this, her letter says, Dear Liberty Church of Christ, thank you, David, for part in Paul's funeral. And a big thank you for Liberty family, for the love that she needed. Thanks to Katie, uh, that's Katie Crane, for her wonderful singing at Paul's funeral. She said, I am glad to have you all as my family, Kay. And then right under that is some signatures of Paul's children. So uh, we'll have that out on the foyer for you to look at that if you'd like. Also, sympathy needs to be mentioned. We've lost a, a, a few. Quava Ferris, this, she passed away February the 13th, and her funeral was this past Thursday. The, and uh, that's Rachel Goza's sister, which would be Danny Goza's sister-in-law. Uh, and so he really appreciates our prayers on that family's behalf. Anthony Pounds, many of you know Anthony. He had cancer and he did pass away. So keep his family in prayer. And Philip Franks, we've been announcing Philip, uh, he had COVID problems and was really struggling with that. This is uh, the late Al Franks' son, who is of the Magnolia Messenger. He did finally succumbed to COVID, he, he passed away. So uh, his wife, June, has lost her husband, Al, and two boys, Paul and Philip, all within just a little bit of time. So be in prayer for June and, and that entire family. By the way, Philip's funeral is today at Kosciuszko at the uh, Cole Pepper Funeral Home, so pray that that will go well. We do have some uh, prayer requests. Uh, you might remember Randy English. We support Rangley English. He's a missionary in the uh, Pacific Islands. And some of you who, we went up there and did some work in, uh, for him in stateside. Well, he has a home here. But he had problems with cancer in his throat. Well, that's been a, a, some time ago. But they said you might have problems with that because of all the radiation and the treatments that you got because of this cancer. And, uh, and now he's got problems. His carotid artery on his left side is closing up. So he's going to have to have surgery on that. And it's going to be March the 4th, which is just this week, at 8 a.m. So be in prayer for Randy English. Also, Mike Burke, he has prostate cancer. The good news is it hasn't shown that it's spread in his body. We appreciate, we're so glad and thankful for that. But he does have a, an appointment with his oncologist in Birmingham this Wednesday, March the 3rd. So he's got a, he's got a, a road to hoe. He's got to go through what he's got to go through. So pray that that will go well for him. Charles Clark, we've been announcing Charles Clark. He is battling COVID. He's still in the hospital, still struggling, showing a little signs of improvement. And many of you know him, and he's, and he's connected with some of your families. So be in prayer for him. 
Isaiah Jackson, we sent that out as a text. This is Peyton Reeves' first cousin, got COVID. He's like 22 years old, and he had to go to the hospital with pneumonia and all kinds of problems, but he's home. They let him go out of the hospital, let him go home, so that's uh, God answered our prayers, and we want to continue to pray that he will get better and better. Don't forget to check your mailboxes. I see there's some things out there, so you want to be sure to get those. Those are words of encouragement. Lots of them are, so be sure to pick those up. So good to see everybody out. Uh, at this time, we'll turn the services over to Brother Van. Let us pray together. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come today today thanking you for all of our wonderful blessings that we have each and every day of our life. We pray, Father, as we come to worship you today, that we'll do it in spirit and truth. Pray, Father, that we'll forget the worldly thoughts and focus on you today as we worship. We pray, Father, be with the ones that were mentioned that are sick. Uh, we have many in our family and friends and community members. Pray, Father, that you will bless them and help them get well. Pray, Father, that you will uh, allow them to return home, those that's in the hospitals. We pray, Father, that you also be with the ones that's lost loved ones. Comfort them in their time of loss. Pray, Father, continue to watch over them and help them get through uh, the situation of losing a loved one. We pray, Father, we thank Thee for Brother David and Miss Deborah. We pray, Father, that You will continue to bless them with good health. And pray, Father, that You will allow them to have a long life in Thy service. And as David brings forth the lesson this morning, pray, Father, that we'll listen attentively and pray, Father, that we'll gain much from the lesson. Be with uh, uh, Brother Jimmy and Miss Amanda as they work with our youth and all of our Bible class teachers. Pray, Father, that they will uh, always look to you for guidance. Pray, Father, that you will continue to be with our youth as they're the future of our congregation. Pray, Father, that you will bless them with safety and help them look to you for guidance. We pray, Father, be with our elders as they oversee us. Pray, Father, that you will help them make the right decisions for our congregation and what's best. Pray, Father, for, be with our deacons, that you will bless them as they carry out the works of the church. Pray, Father, that you will be with us as members as we live our daily lives, that we'll always look to you for guidance and help us be better Christians each and every day. We pray all these things in your Son's name. We pray. Amen. If you would at this time turn and mark in your books number 226 the invitation song at the close of the lesson will be number 226 once you have that marked if you would stand with me as we sing the first and last verse of number 53 Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming to cheer the wandering lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that radiance peaceful beaming since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lap of life immortal. Hold up that splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory gilding Jordan's wave. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept 
Let and promise slow and love combining till night shall vanish in eternal day. Please be seated. Good morning. It is great to see everybody out and who are able to get out after so long a period of time. Many of you are here, and we know you're excited about that, and we are too. <laughs> Go ahead and turn in your songbook. It has been announced to 226. That'll be our song of encouragement. Appreciate so much, Brother Lee, leading the singing. Six seconds in the Bible. We've been talking about six seconds in the Bible. This is our third lesson. And we will complete this series today. We have looked at six seconds. We're not talking about time, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're talking about sequence. There are six seconds, and you can find more, but we're, we're discussing these. And we've already discussed these seconds already. The second covenant or the second law. And we know we have an Old Testament. We have a New Testament. And our New Testament is the second covenant covenant. It's the second law that God provided that's in the Bible. And go back and, and review that. That's one good thing that has come of COVID. It's so sad that COVID's here, but one good thing that's come of it, we are putting our lessons up online. You can watch it on, on Facebook and on YouTube, and we hope you take advantage of that. If you had, didn't get an opportunity to see these lessons, you can always go back and revisit them and take notes. But we did talk about in that first a lesson, part one, we talked about two seconds. And the first one was the second covenant. We also talked about the second birth. How that under the second covenant, we've got to be born again. We have a physical birth. We have a spiritual birth. And we talked about how important it was to have that second birth. Then in part number two, lesson number two, we looked at two more seconds. We looked at, and this was last week, the second man. We have the physical man that we're living in now with our bodies, our heart, lungs, brains, and eyes, and tongues. But then we have the spiritual man. And the second man is spiritual man represented by Jesus. The first man, the physical man, represented by Adam. We're all uh, uh, flesh in Adam, and we're all spiritual in Christ. The first man was Adam. The second man was Christ. The first man was physical. The second man was spiritual. And we had a conversation about that. And we also talked about the second chance. We sometimes call that the second law of pardon. How that we as in the flesh mess up. We make mistakes. We fall short. And we can ask God for a second chance. We talked about how that uh, several did. He gave Jonah a second chance. In the New Testament, he, he gave Simon the sorcerer a second chance. And we talked about that. Today we're going to look at two more seconds, which will complete our study of the six seconds in the Bible. The first one is there's going to be a second coming. The Bible promises us the second coming of Christ. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, here's what the Bible says. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. That's true. Way 2,000 years ago, a little bit longer than 2,000 years ago, he was offered on the cross to bear. That means to take on your sins and my sins. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. He came that first time, born in Bethlehem, lived. Then he suffered, bled, died. He resurrected from the dead, as we talked about with a second man. And then he ascended up into heaven. And right before he went, he told him, he says, hey, I'm coming back. I, I go to prepare a place for you. And, and if I go, I'm going to come back. And, and I'm going to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then when he ascended up into heaven, these angels came up to look at the disciples who were looking and gazing up into heaven until Jesus disappeared. And they said, why are you staring up in the heavens? The same Jesus that went shall in like manner come again someday. So we are looking for him to appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We're going to go home with him one day. The second coming means that Jesus is coming back the second time and we are all going to go to heaven with him, to live with him. Those of us who are saved, those of us who are in Christ, those of us who have been washed in the blood. Now there's a lot of 
speculation about what's going to happen at the second coming, what, what actually takes place, and where do we do? Well, uh, let's look at the Bible and look at some of the things that's going to happen at the second coming. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Here's one thing we know about this second coming. Of that day and hour, knoweth no man. I don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. No man knows when it's going to happen. There's a lot of people on television that will get up and tell you, Oh, uh, Jesus is going to come back in this particular time, at this particular day. And, and just don't. They're false prophets. They ju nobody knows when he's coming back. Not the angels which are in heaven. No angel knows. You say, well, surely they know. They're with God. Uh, God surely have told at least some of those angels. No, the angels don't even know. Gabriel doesn't know. M Michael doesn't know. All the angels doesn't know. Satan doesn't know. Nobody knows. Neither the Son. Wow. That's Jesus. Jesus, does he know? Well, the Bible says he, he doesn't know when God's going to send him back the second time. Who knows? The Father. God the Father knows when He's going to send Jesus back to gather us all together to take us to those, those mansions in the sky. We're looking forward to that day. We know it's going to happen. We just don't know when it's going to happen. It might happen today. It might happen 10 years from now. It might not happen for another 2,000 years. But here's the idea. We don't need to get it in our minds that it's never going to happen. Well, it, had, it didn't happen last year. It didn't happen in my father's generation. It sure didn't happen... 500 years ago, so therefore the earth just remains. It just keeps on going. Well, be careful having that attitude because that's exactly what they thought in, in, the, in the Old Testament when they said, hey, seasons and times come, nothing's going to happen. And when Noah got out there saying, hey, God's going to destroy the earth by water. He's going to cause it to flood. And they said, that ain't going to happen. It's been this way since the beginning of time. Seasons, spring, summer, winter, fall. We all get married. We all eat. We all have jobs. And then tomorrow we die. We might as well just eat, drink, and be married because we're going to die. So just don't worry about nothing big happening. Well, when they were unprepared, the flood came. They were not in the ark. Therefore, they lost their lives. Well, it's coming back. Jesus is coming back. And if we're not in Christ, we're not prepared. And we're not going to be ready for that second coming. So we need to always be ready for the second coming. It's going to happen. Just don't know when. In 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, there's a pretty good discussion on what will happen at that second coming. And we'll just let the Bible tell us what will happen. But we'll also see why Paul wrote this. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write this section of Scripture. And I put it on the board for your convenience but you can read it in your own Bible, uh, in whatever translation that you enjoy reading it. This is the King James Version. But Paul was writing to the Thessalonians. He was in Corinth. He had already started the congregation there, planted the congregation in Thessalonica. But then he went down to Corinth and he heard that they were having a bunch of problems up there in Thessalonica. They were arguing over Christianity. And one of their big arguments was about this people dying. Well, they're going to miss the second coming. Mama died. How sad. Mama died. So when Jesus comes back the second time, she's going to miss out because she's dead. And then Paul is writing this to say, no, no, don't worry. You don't understand. Remember, we, we understand that the dead in Christ will rise. Well, they didn't know that. Not until Paul told them in Thessalonians. He wrote about that. So he had to tell them, don't worry about your dead mama. If she's in Christ and she's covered by the blood of Christ, she's baptized into Christ for the remission of her sins, she's going to be resurrected and she's going to not miss the second coming. So don't worry about that. So he's telling about the second coming for a particular reason. And we'll see what that's all about. And we sometimes miss that reason, actually. Here's what he said. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to know something. I want you to know about the second coming. Concerning them which are asleep, those, that's the term he used, they're dead. Concerning your dead mother, I, want you, I don't want you to be ignorant about it. I want you to know about the people who are dead. That, here's the purpose of writing this section of Scripture, you sorrow not. I don't want you to be sad because your mama died. Because she's coming out of that grave, if she's a Christian, and she's going to not miss the second coming. 
In fact, she's going to get to it before we do, that are alive and that are remaining and have not died yet. The whole point of him writing about the second coming in this text is that we aren't sorry. I'm afraid that a lot of people, when you start talking to them about the second coming, they're sorry. I don't want the second coming. To, I, I want to see my children raised. I want to see my, some grandchildren. I want to see what happens with, with development on planet Earth. I want to see more. I don't want the second coming to come. And so when you start talking about the second coming, first thing everybody does, oh, I'm so sad that the second coming is, is going to happen. I don't want it to happen. i got too much to do here on Earth. Folks, we're too much in love with the Earth if that's our first thought. The reason that Paul is writing to the Thessalonians about the second coming is that they're not sorry. That they got something to look forward to. Even as others which have no hope. Those people that have no hope, they're scared of the second coming. They don't want the second coming to come. They have no hope. They're not in Christ. And, and I want you to know that if you're in Christ, you have nothing to be sorry about concerning the second coming. He says in the very next verse, for if we believe, and there's a big word, if, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, which we do, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Your mama, who is asleep, dead, in Christ, in Jesus, she's going to come up out of that grave. Nothing to worry about. That's something to look forward to, in fact. Verse 15, the very next verse. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. I'm telling you what God told me to tell you. What? That we which are alive and remain unto the second coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And that word prevent, other translations other than the King James Version says precede. What does that mean? Something that is preceding something goes before it. So he's saying if you're still alive when Jesus comes back, don't worry. Your dead mama will be ahead of you. We will not precede them. We will not get ahead of them. A lot of people in the Thess Thessalonia were thinking, well, when Jesus comes back, and they thought he was going to come back in their lifetime, they were wrong about that, but that's what they thought. And they were thinking, oh, when he comes back, then I'll be there, but my dead mama won't make it, and so I'm sad. And Paul said, don't be sad. You're, we're not going to get in front of those that have died in Christ and they're sleeping Jesus. They're going to be ahead of you. He goes on to say, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. It's going to happen. The Lord's going to come from heaven, just like he ascended up into heaven. It's going to happen with a shout. You're not going to miss it. People say, well, what if I miss the second coming? You're not going to. It's going to happen. There's going to be a shout and every attention is going to happen. With the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ, what? Shall rise first. They're coming out of that grave. Your mama, who has died and she's sleeping in Jesus, she's going to come up out of that grave and she's going to rise first. And she's going to meet him in the air. In verse 17, then... After the dead in Christ rise up, and it's going to happen, their shout come, here comes Jesus, the voice of an archangel, the trump of God. People are coming up out of their graves. They're sitting up, and what else? Then we which are alive and remain, if you happen to still be alive, if he comes today, you'll probably still be alive. What's going to happen with you? You will be caught up together with them who? The people who come up out of their graves. You're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds. They're coming out of their graves. They're going to shoot up there with him. And then we are going to, they're not, we're not going to get ahead of them. They're going to go on up there and we're going to just meet them up there in the clouds with him. And as a result, so shall we ever be with the Lord. The second coming means that we're going to be with God someday. And here's the purpose that Paul wrote this text. Not just for the Thessalonians and their issues, but for us too. Verse 18 of chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. Wherefore, because all this is going to happen, comfort one another with these words. When we talk about the second coming, it should be comforting. Amen. It should be something that comforts us. We're not going to see sickness anymore. We're not going to see death. We're not going to see the problems. We're going to enjoy. It's a good thing.
to talk about the second coming. Comfort one another with these words. Unfortunately, not everybody's going to be in Christ, and not everybody's going to have the hope that Christians have. Here's what 2 Thessalonians 1.8 says. In flaming fire, he's not only come with a shout and the voice of an archangel, in flaming fire, what's he going to do? Take vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel. They've never been baptized into Christ. They've never obeyed the gospel for the remission of their sins. And they've, they're not rise to walk a new life. No, they haven't obeyed the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's going to happen to those folks? Vengeance. I don't want to be those folks. He's not only going to come to give us a home in heaven and meet Him in the clouds and take us where we can be with Him forever. He's also going to take vengeance on folks that are not ready. That's a bad thing. Maybe that's why a lot of people are scared and they don't want to talk about the second coming because they know in their heart of hearts that they will be in the group that's going to get vengeance taken out on them. And they're not looking forward to that. It's not comforting. John 14, 3 says, if I go to prepare a place for you, and that's what he's going to do, I will come again. I'm going to receive you to myself. There I am. There you may be also. We've already noted that verse. So you got two groups of folks, folks that are going to have vengeance taken out on them and folks that are going to go to heaven and be with Jesus forever. Now, whether you're sorry or not is based on which of those groups you're in. Acts 17, verse 31 says this, because... The vengeance and the reward, it's all because of something. What? He hath appointed a day. We don't know when that day is going to be, but he's appointed a day in the which he will judge the world. He's coming back, and in that second coming, he's going to judge the world in righteousness. Everything that he's going to do is right. If, if I don't make it to heaven, it'll be the right thing. Now, I don't like it. I don't want it, but it'll be right. Whatever judgment he's pronounced on any individual, it will be the right judgment. He's coming back and judge the world righteously. By that man whom he hath ordained. Now, who is that man that he ordained? It's Jesus Christ. He's going to use Jesus, and that's going to be the, the fact, uh, how he's going to judge the world. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. Through Jesus, he's given assurance to me and you. What kind of insurance? In that he hath raised him from the dead. He raised Jesus from the dead. He's going to raise you from the dead. He's going to raise me from the dead. And that is blessed assurance. So what's our responsibility? Matthew 24 verse 44. Therefore, because it's going to happen, be ye also ready. Just be ready for it. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. You don't know when it's going to happen? Just be ready for it. The second second that we're going to look at is there's going to be a second death. Now all these other seconds, we've been encouraging all of us to be excited about it, to take advantage of it, to get involved in it. The second law, the New Testament, we want to be a part of that. The uh, second birth, we want to be a part of that. We want you all to be born again. The second man, the spiritual man, we, we want to be a part of that. And we want to be a part of that second chance if we need that second law of pardon. We want to be a part of that. We encourage you to be a part of that. The, um, the second coming, it, it's a good thing. We, we want to, don't be sorry about it. Look forward to it. We all want to be a part of that. So all of the five seconds that we've already looked at, that's something we want to embrace. But we sure don't want to embrace this one. The second death. It's a bad place to be if we're involved in the second death. Let's talk about the second death. James 2 verse 26 tells us about the first death, the physical death that we're going to experience. If, you, if Jesus doesn't come back for another hundred years, most likely everybody in this audience, maybe with the exception of a couple, will, all, will experience the first death, the death of our body. I'm not really looking forward to that death. I, I'll just be honest with you. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried. I, I'm trusting God. I believe I'm going to go to heaven. But it, it's like one lady told me on her deathbed. She said, David, I'm not scared of dying. I'm scared of the sting of death. And I, and I think I understand what she meant. Going through the process of death. She don't understand. She don't know what it is. She's never experienced it. I haven't either. So I'm not looking forward to going through the experience of death. 
but I'm not letting death stop me from getting ready to meet Jesus, getting ready to be with Him forever and having that hope in heaven. So James talks about the fact that we're going to experience a, a physical death as the body without the spirit is dead. Even so, faith without works is dead also. He's making a greater point about faith and works, but he's saying that through the body without the spirit. When the spirit leaves my body, then my body is dead. That is the first death. But there's a second death. First, 2 Thessalonians 1.9 Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord? I think that's what hell is. It's being away from the presence of God. Did you know that every human being that's ever lived, that's alive on earth today, is, is connected with God in some way? The Bible says, in Him we live, we move, and we have our being. Well, I live, I'm moving, and I have a being. So in Him, I'm connected with Him. The worst of all worst criminals, Charles Manson maybe, Jeffrey Dahmer, Jack the Ripper, they lived, they moved, they had a being, so in some shape, form, or fashion, they were connected with God. They were created in the image of God. So every human being that's ever lived has got some sort of connection with God. But the second death is when we are put away from the presence of the Lord, when there is absolutely zero connection with God. That's hell. As much as heaven is 100% connection with God, being 100% in God, Hell is being 100% away from God. I don't know what that means. I don't know how, I've never experienced it. Jesus explained it by saying, well, it's like being on fire forever, and, you, and the worm dieth not, and you're going to burn for a thousand, and maybe you physically feel uh, burning flames. But you're going to be away from God forever. That's the second death. You're going to be away from the glory of His power. Heaven is you're going to be right there with the glory of His power. Hell is nowhere near the glory of her. Never seeing it, never experiencing it, never being a part of it at all. That's hell. Revelation 20, 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. It's, it's a lake of fire where you're burning forever. Like that picture we put up. People are in a lake of fire. The fire is the lake and you're inside it. And you're burning forever and ever and ever. No recourse. Never going to get out. Never have any hope that God's going to come and save you. On earth, right now, we do have that hope. We can say, God, I, I want to be saved. I want to be baptized for the remission of my sins. I want to be added to the church. I want to be uh, put into Christ. We have that hope. We can do that. But once we hit hell, there is never no hope. We can't expect God to send Jesus to get us out. We're done. We're done for all of eternity. And here's what the Bible says. This is the second death. The first death is being separated from your physical body. The second death is being in hell for all of eternity. We don't want to be a part of that second death. Revelation 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. If you're not going to be a part of the second death, you're blessed. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. They shall reign with him a thousand years, which is an infinite number of years. Folks, we need to be prepared for the second coming so that we do not have to experience the second death. Listen to this and write it down. Put it on your refrigerator. Somebody shared this with me and I said, I like that. And I wrote it down. Christians are born twice and they die once. Non-believers are born once and they die twice. Christians are born twice. They're born physical and they're born again. But they only die once. They die the physical death and they'll never experience the second death. But non-Christians are only born one time. They're not born again, but they die twice, the physical death and the second death. 
Folks, if you're a Christian, you need to be born again because the second coming is coming and you don't want to be a part of the second death. Why don't you come? Why together we stand and sing the song that's been selected. Day coming, a great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by. When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? A bright day coming, a bright day coming, there's a bright day coming by and by, but its brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? There's a sad day coming. A sad day coming, there's a sad day coming by and by. When the sinner shall hear his doom depart, I know ye not. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? this time turn to number 447. Song before the Lord's Supper 447. King of my life I crown thee now thine shall the glory be Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray at this time that we would each take our minds back to the cross to remember the death of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray at this time as we take of this bread, which the Christian represents the body of Christ that hung on that cross, we pray that we would each take, it, take of it in a worthy manner. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Likewise, man, our Heavenly Father, as we continue to reflect upon the cross, pray that we would take of this cup, the fruit of the vine, which to the Christian represents the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. Pray that we would too take of it in a worthy manner. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now we'll say our prayer for our giving. Dear God, we just thank you so much for all the many material blessings that you bless us with each and every day. Father, you're just so good to us and bless us with so much, and we just thank you for it. Pray today, Father, that we would give back a portion to you which you have blessed us with. Pray that we would each do so with a cheerful heart. Pray that much good would come from our giving here today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Again, it's great to see everybody gathered together to worship God. Uh, one other announcement that I, I don't think I made it during that announcement period. Dale Hester, this is Joyce Hester's son. We've been announcing that he's got to have some open heart surgery, a valve in his heart. It needs to be replaced, uh, fixed, whatever. It's pretty serious surgery. And they've been postponing him, postponing him because uh, of the weather and COVID, different things. But now it's time. In the morning, at about 7.30, I think, he's supposed to be there. Some a hospital in, in Memphis, maybe, or in Tennessee. But, but be in prayer for Dale Hester having that open heart surgery. He would appreciate it very much. Be back with us tonight, if at all possible, at 6 p.m., and we'll worship God again. One hundred and sixty-five. If you would please stand with me one last time for first and last verse of 165. O oh, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. All oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee, Never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for allowing us to gather together and worship you. And uh, just ask you to continue to be with those that was mentioned here today, those battling cancer and different health issues and battling COVID. And please comfort those, Father, that's lost loved ones and be with those with upcoming surgeries. Father, we just ask you to help us to meditate on what we've heard today, Father, and apply it to our lives. Please forgive us for we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.